Good morning everyone. So it's Thursday the 27th of December and I realized that I hadn't been doing dates for my video so um, it could have been any day. Um, but no, it's Thursday and it's about 10 a.m. in the morning now. So I had wanted to do a video showing my Hoya collection, but then I got all my Hoyas out and I realized it wasn't really a big enough collection to want a full video on it. So I just thought I'd show you guys it here. So I thought I had more Hoyas, but I've only got five. So I might just do a mini haul here. So firstly, this lovely looking fellow is a Hoya Indian rope. Now, this guy, I do believe has grown a lot since I've had him. He's, um, I've had him for a year or so. And I think this new fit is definitely, is definitely new. But he's got some amazing foliage. It's so curly. He is a very tolerant Hoya. I leave, leave him outside and I could give him a little bit more TLC because he just sits um, on my greenhouse he gets partial shade and he he gets watered probably once every two to three weeks so I haven't had much trouble from him uh, he's still he's, he's a very he's a very good plant the next Hoya I wanted to show everyone is this Hoya Australis now interestingly I got this one from a plant haul from a plant Instagram in Sydney uh, Instagram in Sydney called Plant Bits. Um, he's got an amazing collection of plants. So if you do come across his Instagram, please go check him out. So this was I got off of a plant swab and he's called a Hoy Australis. But interestingly, guys, when I got this from a commercial nursery, this was labeled as a Hoya Austra Australis as well. So clearly they're not the same uh, not the same type of plant, but they've been labeled the same thing. So I'd be really interested to know which one is the true Hoya Australis. But this guy, he's gotten so much growth recently. It's very exciting to see, because I know Hoyas are typically very slow growers, but you can see his new growth here and his new leaf here. It's very exciting. But yeah, I've got, this is my Hoya Australis number one. Very big leaves, which I also enjoy. Now Hoya Australis number two, he's got his leaves are a lot more slender. And this guy, I really should give him a little bit more care because he kind of just sits there inside, not doing much. I have been guilty of not being not watering him as much as I should, which you can tell because when he had some new growth here, uh, I didn't give him enough water, so this bit kind of died off. So that's a sign, guys. When you notice new growth, you definitely should up the watering for your plants, regardless of what type of plant it is. I know Hoyas, just got to be careful because they don't like to be overwatered too much. But yeah, guys, this is my Hoya Australis number two. What really attracted me to him was I actually wanted our Hoya Puba Calyx, but haven't had. I haven't really found one at the moment, but when I saw this guy and his leaves, I was like, oh, this is similar enough. Um, so I thought I'd pick him up. Now, my fourth Hoya of my small Hoya collection is this Hoya Cunningham. Beautiful leaves. I really like Hoyas with big leaves because I just think they're so um, aesthetically pleasing. Uh, very pretty. Also on my uh, on my Hoya list is I like to get the Hoya Obovata. Oh, actually, Hoya Obovata. I kind of already have one. You would have seen him in my other. This guy I've been trying to propagate. So I've got him in his legation. I'm not going to check the roots just yet because I only put him in here about two days ago. But yeah, this is my Hoya Obovata splash. I'm really loving the big leaves. Look at that. So yeah guys, this is my very small Hoya collection. I do have plans to expand this. One of the next Hoyas I'd like is, I think the a more established Hoya Obovata, but also a Hoya Fungi, Fungi, um, and also a Hoya, uh, I think it's Lafoyata. Lafoyata, so it's the dinner placed Hoya. Hey guys, I just thought I'd do a quick mini Hoya haul for everyone. Oh, not Hoya haul, I thought I'd do a quick mini Hoya collection for everyone. All right guys, I'm gonna do a bit of repotting 
and some soil moisture checking. This guy looks a bit, his soil looks a bit damp. So I'm just gonna repot him up in some new soil mix. So guys, for a while, I'd just been eyeballing my soil to see how wet it was. <coughs> Just like I did just then but guys if you have a moisture meter this is a really great tool to help you check the moisture of your soil so what it is is it's something like this and all you do is you just stick it in your pot guys it is wet it is wet that is no good because I haven't watered this guy I think the last time I watered him was like five days ago so this is obviously way too wet so I've got to re put him up quick um, moisture meters guys I think they are quite common uh, they're relatively cheap I think I paid 10 bucks for this guy at my local Bunnings store so you guys let's go and repot up this black knight guys I'm not as sure if you can see it there but this I'm, I'm kind of worried that this looks like root rock root rot so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to run this under water just to check how bad the roots are but you can see that this leaf is already falling off I don't think he's very happy guys oh fingers crossed he goes he's okay all right guys so what I did was just run him under some water and had a look at his roots it's really hard to tell um, with roots sometime because particularly if the plant is a bit dark like this one it's hard to see if their roots are actually rotting or if it's okay now Normally a rule of thumb is white roots indicates it is a healthy plant and you're not having some root rot but you can see some of the, the most of the roots here are quite dark in colour. The one thing that's probably giving me a bit more hope is roots are still not mushy. So when I was running it under water, if you find that your roots are breaking away very easily and it's quite mushy, that means your root rot has gotten, it's gotten pretty bad. So. I guess I'm kind of still assured a bit that his roots are doing okay but what I might do is instead of repotting him in there you can tell that he's way too wet um, I might stick him in a jar of perlite and let, encourage his roots to go through there and let them heal a bit so I've got a jar here and I've got my perlite in here so what you want to do is just you want to pour some perlite into your jar Oh, actually the first thing is you should check if this jar is going to be big enough for your plant. I think he's a bit small, but I think is he, this is the only jar I have in the moment, so it might, it might have to do. So what you want to do is you want to pour a little bit of perlite in first. And then you want to pop your plant in. And then you want to fill the rest with perlite. So it's nice and stable and then what you want to do is you want to fill this up with some water and so the purpose of this is really to help your roots uh, breathe a lot more so roots remember they need oxygen as well they need to feel like they can breathe but being in really moist soil that uh, it's like your skin so it's blocking the pores, so it's blocking the roots, preventing them from being able to breathe. So perlite is a very good aerated medium that pe a lot of people tend to use for propagation. And I've started to use this way to treat my plants for root rot. So if I'm suspecting them to um, be suffering from root rot, what I would tend to do is put them in some perlite and some water and see how it goes from there so guys lesson learned today or well not really because I'm still learning this lesson but really be careful of the soil mix you're using a soil mix that's not aerated and that's too moisture retention can do a lot of harm to your plants which I hope you don't experience but can learn from my mistakes actually that might be helpful for me to share with everyone is uh, how did I know that it was time for me to repot the plant or check on its soil aside from using the, the moisture meter is I noticed that this black knight or this plant had new growth coming out and normally when new growth when you start to see new growth 
my experience with this is they often it often happens quite quickly but it just seemed like this was stuck in this position for such a long time and these nodes didn't do anything as well so that was sort of a sign to me to say hey actually something might not be right with the roots let's go check it out all right same thing i've done with my polydactyl i um i had him in this soil um, i had him in this pot before and you can see that the soil is quite still really wet so i poured it out in there but i was debating whether or not i should pop him in uh, some perlite like the black knight but one thing that's making me think whether i should just change up his potting mix and still keep him in um, some soil rather than popping him in some perlite is that over the past couple of days I've noticed his leaves perk up a bit which which is a good sign because it means that he's, he's a bit happier before when I first got him he was super like droopy hmm what are these yellow spots on him so I don't know if I should actually just change up his soil because he might be liking that soil I bought him rooted uh, it was advertised as rooted but I noticed then when I got him he didn't look like he had any roots I had a look at him just then, he still doesn't look like he has any roots. Yeah, maybe I'll still keep him in soil because he seems to be looking a lot more happier. Alright guys, that looks like a pretty aerated mix to me. It's a lot of orchid bark and a lot of perlite. I think I overdid it with the perlite. You sit in in there now the thing with root rock guys is once you've repotted them try not to well my what I tend to do is I try not to water them for a bit um, until they settle so we'll see how he goes over the next couple of days if these continue to perk up then that's a good sign but yeah guys I hope that was a I hope that was a bit helpful mm -hmm.